This video was sponsored by HelloFresh. Hey, I've always liked little drawers. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I made this shop organization extravaganza. I've got drill storage, battery chargers, all my fastener storage, sandpaper. Built this thing in one day. It's not too difficult. There's plans available over on my website. And if you're a top tier patron, you get the plans for free. So if you're not a patron, go sign up. There's a link down there in the video description. There's also a link to everything you need to build this, including these fastener, holder, sorter, thingamabobs. So check it out. Now, play the video. I'm not gonna lie, this is an upgrade I've been needing to make for a long time. I've got loose fasteners just shoved in every nook and cranny all over my shop. Some of the containers are empty, some of them are full, they're all different sizes, I can never find anything. It's a big problem. Another problem is my sandpaper storage. I got it all shoved in the bottom of this cart, it's hard to find the right grit that I want when I want it, and it's really hard to tell when I need to order more sandpaper. That's not gonna work too well either. And then I got this for a drill storage battery charging system. I got a bunch of different kinds of drills with different kinds of batteries. It's a mess, it's a pain, and I just don't wanna deal with it anymore. And to uh, top it all off, I bought these organizing things a while ago, but they're so tiny that I can't hold very many fasteners in there, and they're not clear, so I can't see in there to see how many I have left, and they're all stacked on top of each other. I didn't think it through very much, and I just don't want to do it anymore, so I'm not. I'm going to build something that will house my drills, my sandpaper, my fasteners all in one place, and look something like this. My fasteners will go in the middle into pre-bought storage containers. My drills over on the side. There's gonna be a false front on the bottom where I can plug all my cords in behind so you're not gonna see them. So let's get to work. As I mentioned, there is plans for this unit available on my website if you would like to build one of your own. I'm gonna start by ripping down some three quarter inch birch ply. This is gonna make up the outside of my entire storage unit, the frame if you will. Now, I'm not ripping this down to the right width yet. As you can see, all these dividers are held in place with a dado, and I wanna make sure those dados are perfectly lined up from the top down to the bottom. So the best way to do that is to cut a piece for the top and bottom that's one piece, and then we're gonna cut it in half into two pieces after we cut our dados. That'll make sure all the dados are lined up from top to bottom, and we won't have to worry about getting them super precise. So after ripping down a piece that is twice as wide as I need it to be for my overall storage unit, I get out my track saw and I cut a 45 degree angle on one side and then flip it over to do the same on the other side. A 45 because I'm gonna do basically a mitered box to hide the fact that it's just plain old plywood. I mean, people are gonna know it's plywood because it looks like plywood, but you don't have to see the exposed plywood if we do a mitered box. So after cutting a 45 on one end, I trim off some excess and then cut a 45 on the other. So this is the exact length that I need at this point for my top piece and my bottom piece. Next, I need to figure out exactly where all my dado slots need to go for my internal dividers. So just using my SketchUp model and a little straight edge, I start marking out where all those dado slots need to land and then transferring that mark onto the front of the piece of plywood. We need that mark on the front of the piece of plywood because I'm gonna be using my Rockler crosscut sled and dado insert on the table saw to cut all these dados. The dados are a half inch wide by quarter inch deep. Because we are using three quarter inch ply for the outside of the box, I'm slimming it down to half inch birch ply for all the internal dividers. This piece was a little awkward because of the length, and this is about as big as I'm comfortable going on the dado saw before I'd switch to doing this with a router. So if you're not comfortable, you could just use a router to cut all these dado slots. But I got it done in the end, and with all my dado slots cut, I could then take this piece over to the table saw and cut it into our two separate top and bottom pieces. 
I purposely cut it a little big when I initially ripped my plywood so that I didn't have to get it dead center in the middle. So I just trimmed both pieces down to right around nine and a quarter inches. And then I cut another piece down to that same width that'll make up my two side panels. Then I took that side panel and this time it was thin enough that I could just cut that 45 degree angle over on the chop saw, just like this. And I now had all four of my outside frame pieces cut and mitered and almost ready to hook together. I decided to just uh, roughly set them next to each other and make sure nothing looked too crazy wonky, which it didn't, so that's good. Now before I actually glue this thing up, I need to cut a few more dados on this far right side for my drill storage battery storage area. So I took that piece again over to the dado saw and cut out two half inch dados in that as well. Next, I need to add a quarter inch dado on the back side of every single piece to house my back panel. This will just be a piece of quarter inch birch that we lock in between those four sides we just cut. So I space my saw blade out three quarters of an inch from my fence and I raise the blade height to a quarter of an inch and I start running all those pieces through to add that quarter inch groove. And because I'm not using a dado saw, I have to do this twice to get up to a quarter of an inch in width. But in no time, I managed to add that nice quarter of an inch groove onto all my pieces and we're almost ready to glue this thing up. But since we're using mitered corners and I wanted a little more strength, I decided to throw just a few dominoes in each one of those joints. So I mortise those out real quick with my DF500. Zip zap, zoop. I don't know what sound a domino joiner makes. I usually make that sound for a saw, but domino joiner is more of a drip drap droop than a zip zap zoop, I suppose. Anyways, in no time I had all my dominoes drilled out and I decided to dry fit the box just to make sure everything fit together the way that it was supposed to. And unfortunately it did not fit together. I'm just kidding. I'm just used to saying it does fit together so I thought I'd change it up a little bit. Keep you guys on your toes. Now that it was all dry fit I could take measurements for my back panel and cut that because obviously we're gonna have to cut that and insert it before we glue up all the sides or else we're not getting that thing in there. So I took a piece of quarter inch birch over to the table saw, I ripped it down to the right width, and then I cut it to the right length. But I won't show you that part because it's pretty boring. With my back panel cut to the correct size, I went over and slid it into that pre-cut quarter inch groove that we prepared earlier. Then I put the top back on just to double check and make sure my panel was indeed the right size. Now because these are mitered corners, we are going to have to get a little creative with how we glue this thing up. Now you've seen me use these clamping calls in the past, and lots of times I'll just glue them directly onto my piece of wood. But you can't really do that with plywood, or when you go to take them off it'll rip that plywood veneer right off with it. So in this case I opted for the old tape and CA glue trick. That way we can get the calls on there add some clamps, get some good clamping pressure, and in theory, they should peel right off when everything's nice and dry. I should also mention that I'm just gonna glue up one side completely, let it dry, do its thing, and then come back and glue up the other side. I'm not a big fan of trying to do all four corners on a mitered box at once. It's stressful, it freaks me out. There's a lot going on and I just don't love it. So if you have the time, just do two corners, be relaxed, be playful, do your thing, and then once those are dry, do your other two. Trust me, it's much, much easier. As you can see with these clamping calls, you get nice even pressure and good squeeze out on all of those mitered corners. These should come out seamless if we did everything the way that we were supposed to. Since we had a little time to kill while we waited for those corners to dry, I decided to start getting the measurements and cutting my internal dividers. So after taking measurements off my box, I went over and started ripping down some half inch ply and testing to see if it would fit into these pre-cut dados. Hindsight, I probably should have done this before I got everything glued up. Thankfully, they were snug, 
but I was confident I could pound them in there. So I cut down a whole bunch more to that same width and set them aside until we were ready to insert those dividers. By this time, our corners were dry so I could take my clamps off and hopefully very easily remove these calls. Let's see how that goes. Whoop, pops right off, no problemo. And this goo, well, you just rub it with your finger and that comes right off too. Nothing a little sanding won't take care of. In no time, I managed to get these corners cleaned up and they were looking sharp. Like literally, they were pretty sharp. You gotta sand those edges down a little bit or you'll cut your fingers. With one side completely glued up, I flipped the whole thing upside down and I just repeated step A on the bottom side. Added some tape for my calls to sit on, glued my calls in place, added a little glue, and applied some clamps. Now we just gotta wait until these are dry as well. So I decided to capitalize on the time that I had while I waited for that glue to dry and cut all of my divider pieces down to the right length. Now these divider pieces get a little tricky because as you can see, they have dados as well to hold all the internal shelves. So while we're waiting for that glue to dry, I decided to take this time and figure out where all those internal dados needed to go. I just sat at my computer, took some measurements right off of my SketchUp model, transferred them onto each divider, making sure to check and double check that I got all of these measurements correctly. And then I just went over to the data saw and started hacking into them, just crossing my fingers, hoping that I took enough time to make sure everything was where it needed to go. Now I mentioned that all of my dados were a half inch wide by quarter of an inch deep. And that is true, with the exception of one set of dados. And that's the very middle divider where there's identical shelves coming out of both sides. You see, I'm using half inch ply. So if I did a quarter inch dado on both sides of the half inch ply, well, that's gonna cut all the way through. So for this one piece, I slimmed down the depth of my dados to an eighth of an inch. That way I'd still have a quarter of an inch in the middle and we're not cutting our divider into two pieces. After getting all those dados cut, it was ready to take my box completely out of clamps, and after a little sanding, I was now ready to slide in these dividers that I worked so hard on. Let's just hope they go in exactly as they should. Now you'll notice I'm applying glue to each one of these slots before I slide my divider in. And a little trick of the trade, I only apply glue to about the top third of that dado slot, because as you push that shelf and hammer it in, it's gonna pick up that glue and drag it down the rest of the way. And you don't really need a ton of glue to hold these in place, just a little bit. You don't want a crazy squeeze out mess when they get hammered all the way down to the bottom. Ain't nobody want that. Once I had all my vertical dividers securely in place with a few clamps just to hold them until that glue dries, I was able to take measurements for all my horizontal dividers. So I ran over to the chop saw, cut down the pieces for those, added a little more glue to those slots, and I slid those nicely into place as well. This thing is really starting to, well, look like that thing I showed you on my computer at the beginning of this video which means I think we must be doing something right. The last piece that needed to go in was the divider for my drills to actually sit inside. It looks something like this, kind of like a garden rake with these cutout slots for the drills to land on as you put them into the drill storage compartment. So before I put this in, I need to cut out all of those slots. So just referencing my SketchUp model, I drew onto that piece exactly what slots needed to be removed, and then I headed over to the bandsaw. I thought about doing this some fancy way to make sure they were perfect, but in the end, it just doesn't have to be perfect. So eyeballing it on the bandsaw, there's just no shame in that. To clean it up a little bit and give a nice rounded profile at the base of each one of those slots, I did take it over to my oscillating spindle sander with a one and a half inch spindle, and just kind of rounded everything over to soften it up a little bit. Once that was done, I headed back over to my box, added a little more glue, and pounded in my final piece to the puzzle. Well, not really my final 
piece. There's a lot more pieces we still have to do, but this is the final plywood piece, so at least there's that. And then, of course, I wanted to test and just make sure that a drill would actually fit in here like it was supposed to. And it did. Hey, not in the wood shop. I'm in the kitchen because this video is sponsored by HelloFresh. Yeah, you've probably heard of them. And if you're not using HelloFresh, I would highly recommend it. This is one of those companies that I actually genuinely use. My wife and I love them. My son's a picky eater, but he seems to love everything that they send to us. And if you're not a great cook, it's awesome because they send you these recipe cards. They walk you through exactly what you need to do. I'm going to make some bulgogi, bulgochi, bul, bulgigi. It's a pork tenderloin with uh, roasted carrots and lemony rice. You don't have to know how to say it. You just got to know how to eat it. And we're going to make it right now. If you're like our family, you probably get stuck in these ruts when it comes to meal planning, where you wind up eating the same old thing over and over again week to week. Well, HelloFresh offers so many recipes to choose from each week to help you break out of your recipe rut. And they're delicious on top of that. And like I said, if I can do it, anybody can do it. If you go to HelloFresh.com right now and use coupon code BourbonMoth16, you're going to get up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. That's right, go to HelloFresh.com, use coupon code BourbonMoth16, you get 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. wonder what they could be. Go do it. Come on. All right, buddy. Oh. Pork bulgogi. Bulgog. Pork bulgogi. This looks delicious. Yeah, I'm a pretty good chef. Awesome sauce. Awesome. Yeah. I want some more sauce on my rice. With our whole box complete, I could start to just double check and make sure everything I wanted to fit will fit. I bought these fastener storage compartments on Amazon. There's a link in the video description. And then I made the slots in the end to hold both my five inch and six inch sanding discs. And then of course we've got the drill storage area, which is also gonna have a battery charging compartment at the base. Then I also wanted to just kind of secure this back panel so that it wouldn't rattle around. So I marked where all my center dividers were and then just using a 18 gauge staple gun, I added a few staples through that quarter inch birch to those dividers to secure it nice and firm. Next, I wanted to cover up the fact that, well, we're using plywood on this entire thing and make it look a little fancier. This is a step that you could skip altogether. If you want raw exposed plywood, there's no shame in that. But I figured it would only take a few minutes. Why not cover it up? So I found some wood in my wood storage rack. I thought it was birch, but as I started cutting into it, I realized it was cherry. But I've been mistaken as a 65 year old man, so why not use cherry in a building project? Not my first choice, but it'll look better than the raw plywood. So after milling down some strips to, oh, about an eighth of an inch, I just started gluing and tacking them over the face of my plywood with a 23 gauge nailer. Now I left these strips overhanging the plywood carcass, oh, about a 16th of an inch on either side. I like to do this when I'm facing plywood because that way I can come back with a flush trim router bit and get everything absolutely perfect and I don't have to worry about lining it up exactly right on the plywood as I face it. So row by row, piece by piece, divider by divider, I got all that raw plywood edge covered up with the exception of the drill storage slots. I just couldn't think of a good way to face that with hardwood without doing some crazy bent lamination. And I wasn't about to do that for a simple shop organization storage thing. So with everything glued and tacked in place, I just got a spiral up cut down cut flush trim bit, chalked it up in my trim router, and I went to town flushing everything up on the outside, on the inside, all over the place. This really cleans up the entire piece and makes it look like something we can be proud of. But I'm proud of everything I make because I pour my heart and soul into it for you, the viewer. All right, enough of that sappy crap. Let's figure out the battery charging area to go along with this drill storage. Now, one thing I hate is exposed cords. Can't stand them. 
I will drill a hole right through a wall if it means hiding a TV cord. I'm that kind of guy. So I thought the best way to handle hiding the cords for these battery chargers was to do a false front so that all the cords could just go into the back compartment and plug directly into the wall and it would look oh so fresh and clean. So I started by just adding some little plywood blocks that were towards the front of the cabinet that I could attach my false front to. First I just held them in place with a little CA glue and the activator spray stuff. One on the top and one on the bottom. And when they were securely in place I just sent a few one inch screws through those to hold them nice and firm. Because that's what screws do. Then I cut a three quarter inch piece of ply that would be my false front and I slid it in. Now as you can see it's leaning out towards the top. I did this to kind of mimic the shape of the chargers themselves so that the batteries would slide in nice and easy and be a little more ergonomically correct, if that's a thing. Now my goal is to fit four chargers into this one little compartment, which means I gotta measure very carefully to make sure they all fit on here. Now luckily these chargers come with little keyholes on the back so that you can just add a few screws and slide them in place. So I added a few screws and tested to see if the chargers were gonna fit and if you would still be able to get a battery in there once they were kind of recessed back into the compartment, which it looks like you will be able to. So confident my plan was gonna work after getting one charger installed, I set to work on getting all three remaining chargers installed onto this one piece of plywood. Now you might be looking at this thinking, yeah, but I can still see all those cords, you moron. Well, you think I didn't think ahead? You don't think I don't have a plan for that? Well, at this point, I really didn't have a plan for that, but don't worry. I think just a few holes drilled behind each one of those chargers and we'll be able to thread those cords right into the back. So after marking out where I needed those holes to be, I went over to the drill press and I started just blowing through that three quarter inch plywood like it was nobody's business. In no time I had four beautiful cord shaped holes drilled and I was ready to set up my charging board. I really liked this process because it made me feel like some master electrician. Now I know I'm only threading cords through holes in plywood, but I don't know, it just gave me the feeling like I was defusing a bomb or building a circuit board for the International Space Station. I know, lofty dreams, but you gotta do something to pass the time while you're in the shop, and your imagination is the best tool you have. At least that's what my mom always told me. With my drills hold, that's not right. My holes drilled and my chargers attached to my false front, I slid it in place and it was a thing of beauty. Now that I knew this was gonna fit exactly as it should, I could start prepping to actually get those cords to an outlet. Thankfully, there's an outlet directly behind where we're gonna be hanging this on the wall. That worked out good. I just needed to cut out a portion of this back panel so that it would expose said outlet once it was hung on the wall. So just using a multi-tool, I cut it on two sides and ripped it out of there. Then the last and final thing we need to add to this is some sort of system to actually hang it on the wall. Now the best thing to do in my mind was just to make a simple French cleat. If you've never used a French cleat before, it is a great way to hang cabinets and various items onto a wall and is basically made up of two pieces of wood, both cut with a 45 degree angle on one end. One is attached to your cabinet and the other is attached to the wall. And when you slide the cabinet onto the piece attached to the wall, those two 45 degree angles come together, making a nice locking cleat. That's probably why they call it a French cleat. Unless it's named after a famous French baseball player who wore cleats. But I don't think there's ever been a famous French baseball player. Anyways, after getting all my pieces cut to size, I drilled a few pocket holes in either end to attach them inside that back portion of my cabinet. This is also why I set that back panel back three quarters of an inch 
so that we'd have room to add this cleat as well as a nailer strip on the bottom. After hooking in both ends with pocket screws, I added a few screws directly through the cleat into those dividers just to give it a little bit of extra strength. And with those last couple screws, our storage cabinet thingamabob was completely built. Now all we had to do was clear off some wall space so that we could mount it and get this shiz organized. So I took everything off the wall that I originally had there that was not adequately doing the job. And I hauled my newly built cabinet over just to kind of hold it in place. Now, as you can see, there's that outlet in the lower right hand corner that is going to be the power supply for our drill charging station. Unfortunately, it is now right behind that stupid nailer strip I put down there, but that's okay. We'll cut out a piece of that here in a little bit. Next, I roughly marked kind of where I wanted that to land on the wall. Then I got a good old stud finder. Now you gotta be careful with these that you don't hold them too close to your body. Cause if I hold this thing next to my body, it starts to go off, if you know what I mean. Dad jokes. And then I transferred where all the studs were onto my cleat that I'm gonna screw to the wall. Once I knew where all the studs were, I pre-drilled a bunch of screws into that cleat just to make it easier to hang it up on the wall so I wasn't holding it with one hand and fumbling around with screws in the other hand. Then using a level to make sure that it was level, I screwed it in place, hooking it into no less than four studs. This thing's not going anywhere anytime soon. With my cleat secured to the wall, I could now carry over my entire cabinet, and if all goes according to plan, this should slide into that cleat and be installed. Well, except for the fact that it's sitting on top of that outlet. Gosh, it's okay. We'll, we'll fix it, just hold tight. All it takes is a little quick multi-tool work. Zip, zap, zoop. That's the right sound for a multi-tool, right? And that outlet is exposed. Next, it probably didn't need it, but I decided to send just a few screws through that bottom nailer strip to make sure that this thing never pops up off of that cleat and comes crashing to the floor, spilling all of my nicely organized fasteners all over the place. But as you can see, this thing is solid. I mean, I weigh 295 pounds, and if it can hold me up, then good on it. I don't weigh 295 pounds. The fact that you even believe that for a second hurts me deeply. Come on. I'm trying to lose weight since the new year. It's just hard. There's always treats in our house. With our cabinet secured to the wall, I could finally start inserting all of my little storage trays. And as you can see, they slid in smooth like a snake eating a gazelle or something along those lines can't wait to get these filled up with all of my various fasteners and finally be able to find things when I'm looking for them I'm also very excited to be able to clearly see exactly what grits of sandpaper I have available and what grits of sandpaper I'm running low on and I can just grab a box out of these little slots use them and then put them back that's gonna be the key here actually putting things back when I'm finished. You can do it, Jason. And then finally, I needed to install my drill charging NASA circuit board. So I added this little splitter onto the outlet so that I could get four plugs plugged in, and I just, well, plugged them in there. Then I added four screws, one in each corner, that are gonna hook into those little bracket brace pieces I screwed in the back there and a zip and a zap and a zoop and bada bing installed now i've seen a lot of these drill storage things where the drills are actually facing the other way and the reason I didn't do that is because I've got a combination of drills and impact drivers. And when they're facing backwards, it's hard to tell which is which. So I like them facing forward so I know exactly what I'm grabbing when I'm grabbing it. 
So I stuck all of my drills in there and I loaded up all of those chargers with batteries. I'm gonna have batteries for days now. Gone are the days of wanting to put a screw in something and having to wait a half an hour for the battery to charge. This is a new future, a new way of living, and I couldn't be more excited. Then my last and final touch was I screwed on this piece of eighth inch thick plate steel. Why, you ask? Well, because I got on Amazon and I found these really cool magnetic screw holder things or driver holder, whatever you wanna call them, these green magnetic things that'll hold drivers. I mean, isn't that kind of cool? All right, now I'm just getting ridiculous. But I will tell you, the thing I was looking most forward to was organizing all of my fasteners. So yes, I painstakingly divided them all out, labeled each one carefully, and it really spoke to my inner OCD. Now I know it's not some fancy handmade piece of furniture. It's not some beautiful original design with glowing black walnut, but it's pretty flippin' awesome and I've been needing it for a long time. Don't wait to get yourself organized. You feel great when you do. Well, there you have it. That wasn't too bad. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you're gonna go get organized yourself because your shop's a mess and it's starting to get embarrassing. People are talking. So get yourself some plans, build yourself an organizational system and get organized. Ta-ta for now. Or T-T-F-N as the kids are saying. At least they did in the 1920s. What do kids say nowadays?